this time, for this exit, for in fact the true existence. And in preparing ourselves, we solve our worldly problems. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, that there shall come a time where the umam, all of the varying nations, تَتَدَاعَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْأُمَمْ كَالْأَكَلَةُ إِلَىٰ قَسْعَتِهَا All of the different nations shall call one another to sit as if they're coming to a feast on a single platter. You. فَقَالُوا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ أَوَ مِنْ قِلَّةٍ نَحْنُ يَوْمَئِذٍ Is it because we're going to be few in number? He said, Kalla. No. إِنَّكُمْ كثير. You shall be many. 1.6, 1.7 billion people. كثير. وَلَكِنْ غُثَاء but you are like the foam or the, the, the scum that is at the top of the oceans, the froth that is pushed by the waves right and left, back and forth. You have no control over your own direction. And there shall soon come a time when Allah shall remove the fear that your enemies have of you, and He shall place in your hearts fi qulubikum al He shall put in your hearts al wahn. قالوا وما الوهن يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم؟ قال حب الدنيا وكراهية الموت. Loving the worldly life and hating to die. Both are the same thing. You love the worldly life, so you want to remain longer. And then the Prophet ﷺ to extenuate and to make it more ingrained in your understanding, he says, and you also fear death. Memorize this hadith and compare it with the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha. The Prophet ﷺ, as is narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari, he tells her, مَنْ أَحَبَّ لِقَاءَ اللَّهِ أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ لِقَاءَ The one who loves to meet Allah, who desires to meet Allah, Allah shall desire to meet him. وَمَنْ كَرِهَ لِقَاءَ اللَّهِ كَرِهَ اللَّهُ لِقَاءَ And the one who hates, detests to return to Allah, to meet Allah, Allah shall detest to meet him. فَقَالَتْ عَائِشَةَ أَفَكَرَاهِيَةُ الْمَوْتِ Are you speaking about hating to die? All of us have this fear of death. And this is Aisha radiallahu anha. All of us fear death, ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَقَالَ لَيْسَ كَذَلِكِ يَا عَائِشَ أَمَّا الْمُؤْمِنِ It's not what you think. As for the believer, إِذَا سَمِعَ بِرِضْوَانِ اللَّهِ وَمَغْفِرَتِهِ وَجَنَّتِهِ Allah. When the believer hears of Allah's pleasure, of Allah's mercy, he desires to return to Allah and to meet Allah. وَأَمَّا الْفَاجِرُ But as for the deviant, إِذَا سَمِعَ بِصَخَةِ اللَّهِ وَغَضَبِهِ وَنَارِهِ كَرِهَ لِقَاءَ اللَّهِ When the deviant hears of Allah's wrath and punishment and anger, he detests to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore it is a disease of the heart it is a lack of one's faith and it's important that we prepare for this eternal life that begins in the grave by preparing for it while we still have the qudra the ability to bring about a blessed end to our existence and therefore we began with the verse that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would constantly remind the sahaba with. It is reported that whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would give a lecture, in fact it is from the sunan of the day of Jumu'ah, it is also from the sunan if you are going to be doing aqdun nikah, you are going to be marrying two people, that you recite khutbat al-hajah, wherein the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say the ayah that we introduced, 
Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu. O you who believe, ittaqu allaha haqqa tuqatih. Fear Allah, the fear that he is most deserving of you. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And do not die, don't allow yourself to come to the point where you are leaving the worldly life and going to the hereafter, except that you are in a state of Islam. It is something that becomes your duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ Do not die, do not enter into the state of death. Unless you are from those who are Muslim, who are submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's important for us to, inco- to establish this in our life, to bring it about by preparing, by having a love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which will produce a love for Allah's mercy and Allah's forgiveness and Allah's jannah, which produces a love of wanting to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The life in the grave. It is one of two destinations. It is one of two ends. There is no third. There is no middle ground. It is either you are from the people who shall have na'im, or you shall be from the people who do not have na'im. It is either you shall be from the people who shall hear the command of Allah افتحوا لعبدي Open for my servant A gate بابا إلى الجنة A gate towards paradise Or You shall hear the command of Allah Open for this person A gate بابا To the gates of the fire These are the realities You shall either be from those who shall see angels With brightened faces Sweet smelling Lenient kind, respectful, who shall gather you and carry you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you shall soon hear, or you shall be from those who shall be given punishment and turmoil and hardship by angels sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to extract you from your worldly vessel, this human body that you have been given so that you enter into eternal punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is a choice that you have made. It is not something wherein Allah oppresses you. لا ظلم اليوم Allah clearly establishes it in the Qur'an. There is no oppression from this day. It is something where the inspiration was given to you. هديناه النجدين مكافرا Uh, We gave him the two paths, the two abilities, the two ways, the two choices. Either he is from those who are in goodness and in obedience to Allah or not. They are two groups who disputed with one another. One of those groups who those who disbelieved, they shall have tailored garments made for them from the fire. It's always two groups. And this sira'ah, this struggle is constant. The struggle between good and evil. The struggle between halal and haram. Sunnah and bid'ah. Iman and kufr. It is constant. Ila qiyam as sa'ah Until the day of judgment. It is something that you will be constantly put to fitna and trial in and through as a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Mulk, describing one of the reasons He has created us in this worldly life, that it is a test, الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا It is Allah who created death and then life and has placed you on this earth So it is to be a test for you so that it will be shown who of you is best. Who of you shall do what is proper, what is righteous this time. For this exit. For in fact the true existence. 
and in 